I have a cousin, he came from uh, Australia uh, like three months ago and he rented a, an amazing house, four bedrooms, I think three bathrooms in the shore, like a few meters from the shore, it's not in the sand, mm -hmm. but he rented this house for, and I'm talking about uh, uh, four bedrooms, right? So it's for a big family. He rented this house for 500. Today, we are heading down to this beautiful destination that I love so much. It's called Brazil with my new buddy and friend, Esdras Suto Jr. Hey, man, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good, Ray. How are you? Good, man. It's good to see you. So Esdras ag agreed to be on the podcast. Thank you for doing this, Esdras, because he's going to break down he lives in the southern state of Santa Catarina, which is this beautiful yeah. area of Brazil that he lives in. And he's going to break down cost of living out there. And, and we're going to just kind of touch on a lot of the same things that we touch on. But also, Esdras and I do a little of the same thing. And Esdras, I'm going to have you tell a little bit of backstory about your life. You have quite an incredible life. You're back in Brazil, but you also have a company that assists expats and retirees that are interested in living or retiring in Brazil. So tell us a little bit about your backstory and uh, and we'll go from there. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for having me here and for the opportunity to talk to your audience. It's a, it's a pleasure. Um, yeah, so I have lived in, in a variety of countries before, uh, in Spain, like uh, the US. And lately, a few years ago, we moved to Canada. I'm saying we because it was my wife, myself, and my son, right? And we had this amazing experience of living in Canada for five years. And then we just decided to put in place a retirement plan ahead of time, right? I think we're maybe too young to retire, but we were thinking about that. Uh, so we started like thinking on where to go and considering, you know, in many places, my wife and my son, they have Italian citizenship, so we could go to any European uh, Union country. But right after the pandemic, the, the world was a little bit, uh, how can I say, weird, right? Things were happening. And then we just decided to come back to Brazil just to stay here for a while, to stay closer to our family. And especially for my son to be able to meet his family because he left Brazil when he was five. He didn't know his grandparents, uh, the relatives. And uh, we ended up here south where we never had been before. And mm -hmm. we just, we just, uh, we thought that this place is, it's so nice. It's amazing. It doesn't look like the Brazil that, every, the biased Brazil, you know, that everybody knows outside of Brazil. Yes. Uh, and we just decided to stay here. So the pen was moving somewhere else, maybe to Uruguay, maybe to Argentina, Paraguay, or even to Europe. But then we could find here the safety we were expecting to have. We, 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 expect, uh, we found here the prosperity and the, and the culture and, the, you know, it's, it, it's all here. So, yeah, so we just decided to buy a property in the rural area and move to the countryside. And here we are. So, and then we, when we when we stopped to think about what we lived, our own experience, right, in, in terms of moving around and being like, as I said, a global citizen, and talking to some uh, friends. So we had the idea of uh, opening this company, which is a, offers a comprehensive uh, settling uh, services for expats. What's the so name of it? Spent, it's a new settlers consultant. Okay. And we'll put that link in right. here so people can see it. Yeah. So why? Because when we we were in Canada, considering going, you know, we were like, oh, I like Croatia, Serbia, Montenegro, this area there, Eastern Europe, and other countries. We were like, okay, so um, are there any company or a person who can help us on, on setting in or finding things and on the language and culture and everything? We couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. So when we when we decided to stay here in Brazil, considering 
all the the expertise that we have uh, in terms of uh, moving, you know, living abroad. We just uh, decided to open this company where we can help people from the planning stage to the selling in. So the entire process, including the the, the paperwork, right, for you to come to Brazil as a, a residence mm -hmm. uh, and, and stay here legally. Wonderful. Before we jump into the 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 Santa Catarina, this is a state that I know really nothing about, and I know like what you what you suggested is that the imagery that most people see of Brazil are of incredible beaches, of Rio, of the carnival. You see a lot of that, but you live in this. And I mean, you've showed me some some imagery of it already. You and I, when we were talking. And it's and it's as beautiful as Tuscany in Italy. It's just roaming hills, green, beautiful. Tell us a little bit about this area. You know, give us an idea of what this area is like and how far away it is from other locations and beaches and towns. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me start from from the end of your question. Uh, it's I consider this state and and very very well located. Why? Because although it's in the south of the country, it's a bit far from the Amazon, for example, or for, you know, the very north. Yeah. But from here, exactly from here where I am right now, if I got my car and drive like around between 10 and 12, 10 and 14 hours, I can cross the border with, with the three different countries, Argentina, Uruguay, and Paraguay. Wow. So just, and it's and I can tell you the roads are nice. I mean, it's not that bad, but most of them they're, they're good, right? Um, and and it's not a long drive. I mean, we we usually we leave at early in the morning, and we get in, in any of those borders by late afternoon, so we can cross a border and, mm -hmm. and, and be in a different country, speaking Spanish, for example, right? The three of those speak yeah, Spanish. Yeah. Um, it's it's about. 12 hours from Sao Paulo driving as well. So it's not that far. And, and again, the landscaping on all those uh, ways for any of those uh, ways is amazing. Lots of green and mountains and uh, waterfalls and everything, mm -hmm. you know, wildlife mm -hmm. that we can see. Uh, from Rio, from here to Rio, it, it's probably I've never did this driving, but it's, it's a one hour flight, mm -hmm. one hour, 20 minutes flight uh, okay. to Sao Paulo as well. Um, I consider this one of the best uh, states because it summarizes the entire country in a very small place. So let me let me explain that to you. We have in the shore we have amazing tropical beaches, just like the ones you see or everybody thinks when we when we say Brazil, right? That that, that mm -hmm. image that comes in our mind of tropical beach with uh, white sand and warm uh, water, blue water. So if you if you uh, look for the the capital of the states, it's a huge island, and and its nickname is the Magic Island. Just so you have an idea, Magic Island. So it's an amazing place. And if from the shore, if you want to go up to the mountains, and for example in the winter, up in the mountains, you can get minus seven degrees in the winter, mm. and it's just like five hours driving, and you can have snow up there. You go up. You go from the sea level to 1,600 uh, meters above the sea level in just maybe four or five hours driving. Mm -hmm. And up and from up there, you can see in a clear day. You can see the sea. You can see the shore from from up there. Wow. So uh, yes, it, it's astonishing. The landscaping here is amazing. Mm -hmm. So we can have both of the worlds, you know, in a, in the same place. And, and other than that, the south region of Brazil, and especially Santa Catarina, was uh, colonized by European settlers. Mm -hmm. So we have a mix of culture here, especially Italians, Germans, Austrians, Polish. Mm -hmm. And uh, depending on where you are, in my city, for example, the predominance is uh, the Germans. So some people yeah. here they still speak German in the streets. Oh, wow. And there's lots of food around. So Blumenau, mm -hmm. it's a city two hours and a half from here. It's it's considered the one of the most German cities out of Germany, and we had the second best Oktoberfest uh, after the, the 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 original one in Munich. You know. Wow. So very, very yeah, cool. very cool. It's cool. Yeah. 
lots of other small cities, small towns where people speak Italian. You can find a very nice cantina, a very nice Italian food, very, very original. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing to be here. <laughs> yeah, so, it sounds amazing. That's awesome. Well, thanks for that, Esdras. So let's dive into the visa. What can you tell us about for retirees that would love to retire, move to um, Brazil? What kind of hoops do they have to jump through to obtain a visa? Well, for retirees, the best way is to come with a retirement visa which is a sort of a golden visa for retired, retired people. Um, the main requirement is if you have a, a pension or uh, any passive source of income that together combined, you can, and you can prove to government, right? That together it goes up to at least $2,000 a month. Okay. 2000 US dollars, right? That's the main requirement. Or um, no, it, that's the main requirement. And you have to stay here for, I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, two weeks, two weeks uh, a year. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And then after a few years, you, you are eligible to, to apply for the citizenship. Okay. After you reside there. The, only difference, the only difference between the, the residency and the citizenship is pretty much uh, the right to vote and having a passport. Yes. Yes. Okay. All the rest, you, you can open a bank account. You can have all the Brazilian documents, you know, that, that you need, and you can live just like a Brazilian citizen. Mm -hmm. No difference. So that's very doable for a lot of people. That so it's a, the 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 minimum income requirement um, is two thousand yeah. a month that you have to show in either a pension or passive income. Is that the same for digital nomads or people that are heading down? do work online, have a remote job, want to go down and, and they love Brazil, they want to live in Brazil? Well, for, for digital nomads, it's a little bit less. It's uh, 1500 USD okay. or, or uh, uh, saving account with at least $18,000. Okay. You, you can show. So, okay. and then by the way, just, just so you have an idea, you have, you, if you're a single person like retiree or, or a digital nomad, uh, considering the conversion rate right now between our currencies, uh, you you can have a very very nice and comfortable life with two thousand dollars here in Brazil. A nice apartment, a very very nice uh, lifestyle. Now, is there a, a and or for the retirement visa like there is for the digital nomad? You said there either eighteen k that you have to show in an account or fifteen hundred a month. If a retirement Pension. If somebody doesn't have a pension, but they have a lot of money in the bank, does that apply to? Uh, I, I I don't remember that in the the regulation, the law. Okay. I think it, it, it has to be two thousand. Um, okay. But it can be, for example, maybe some interest rate. I don't know. I'm not really sure about this, but I imagine. I think it can be, for example, some uh, uh, interest rate from investments that you have, and you can you can combine this with your pension. Or a rental, or a, you know, you have a property rented in the U.S. or in Canada, whatever mm -hmm. uh, you are. So you can prove that you have that uh, that amount of money monthly, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Typically, if somebody doesn't have a pension and they they do have a a large savings, they can always set up a fund and pay themselves per month. And a lot of people would do that to meet requirements. They can they can also do that as well. Let's look at rentals yeah. down there. If you're, if people want to come check it out, they want to stay for like three months or six months just to get a feel if it's right for them. What can, what do rentals start at down there? Well, for a single person, it goes. It depends on the level of comfort you need or you want or where you want to stay. Right? It varies a little bit. When you go to a very touristic spot, it's a little bit more expensive. If you go to uh, you know a countryside town, it, it tends to be cheaper. Mm -hmm. But let's say if you want to stay in a more metropolitan urban area like the, the capital, Florianópolis, right mm -hmm. uh, near near the beach and this type of thing. For for a small apartment, I would say that um, I think 400, 500 max for you to have a nice apartment there. Okay. And you, know? you talk so the capital you're you're suggesting you said Florinopolis is the capital of yeah. 
the state um, Santa Catarina? Yep. That's correct? Yes, it is. Okay. And yeah. Florinopolis is a real hot spot for a lot of digital nomads right now. Oh, yes. And I can't imagine why, because it's a beautiful city, safe. It's like a first world city. I mean, you don't yeah. even feel that you're in the biased Brazil, as, as I said, right? And mm -hmm. it's a mix of, it has all the good things that we have, for example, in Rio, that many expats, they like to be in Rio, but it's violent. It, it's, a, yeah. it's a big city. It, have, it has all the problems like uh, traffic jams and everything. In Florianópolis, it's five, I think it's a little bit more than 500,000 inhabitants. So it's, uh, it's like a, a, a huge capital, very nice, but doesn't have the problems that a, a, like a big city, especially yeah, sure. like Rio and has all the beaches and, and it's beautiful. It's right on the beach. So if you, if you could, how yeah. far would you be from the beach if you had a rental for 400 a month there? Do you know? Not, not but, really far. If, if you, you get want? out from, if you get out from the hotspot, um, you know, it's, it's like automatically it goes down because it's not a touristic spot. I mean, sometimes you're even in the shore, uh, I have a cousin, he came from uh, Australia uh, like three months ago and he rented a, an amazing house, four bedrooms, I think three bathrooms in the shore, like a few meters from the shore, it's not in the sand, mm -hmm. but he rented this house for, and I'm talking about uh, uh, four bedrooms, right? So it's for a big family. He rented this house for 500. Wow. So if you consider if you're a single person, if you want to, let's say, uh, two bedrooms because you want to you work in a home office and you want one bedroom to be your, your office and, and another one for you to sleep. Right. It goes it goes down. Yeah. Yeah. So it, 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 he's in the shore, but he's not in the hotspot like in Florianopolis or in the greater Florianopolis. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So then. Um, all right. So if you if you go outside of Florinopolis where you're a little bit closer to where you're at in the rural area what do rents go for out there if somebody wants to live out in that really lush beautiful green territory yeah. that you live in what well, can you find something out there for well you can you can find something for a single person not uh, you know 300 you about 300 say, maybe even less yes okay the thing in the countryside is that uh, there's not a lot of high-rise buildings, right? It's more horizontal. Yeah. So I, I don't think it's bad because I love living in houses. I like having a backyard. I have. I like having a front yard. You know, you, have, you can have a little garden. So you have this contact with uh, the nature more closely than if you were in a in a high-rise building. In a high-rise building, so it, it it goes down, but depending on the house. Uh, where the house is, it, it's not going to be very, very low because if the house is a very nice house and located, it's, but mm -hmm. it, yeah, you can find something very nice for three, 300 and it's not difficult for you to find something yeah. like that. Well, it's not, if you can find a four bedroom house for 500, you know, that's incredible. <laughs> In the shore, In the shore yeah. right? In, yeah, like close to the shore. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Um, yes, it is. That is impressive. Okay. So then... As far as like utilities, what are the utilities down there? What do you pay for utilities and electric, water, gas? What do they have? And, and, and approximately what are the monthly expenses for utilities? Well, we have one big advantage here in Brazil, though uh, in South region, sometimes the temperature goes down, right? But uh, the advantage is that we don't have a heating system like we have for example in canada right it's a forced mm -hmm. air heating system right which is the most common and more efficient so this is the one that we spend more money because it's a lot of gas that mm -hmm. we use to you know furnace to heat the house okay so pretty much when we talk about utilities here we're talking about uh electricity and water right okay uh, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you, it's the, the electricity, it's, 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 it's pretty low. For a single person, I would say that you would pay in a, in a two-bedroom apartment or a house, you would pay in a U.S. dollar probably, probably about $40. And that's at just that's electric per month. Electricity, yes. And for water... Uh, it's been a long time that I don't pay for water because I'm in the country, right? 
I have four water springs here in my property. So, nice. um, but I, I, it's not, it, it, we can consider that the same thing because for water, we pay water and sewage, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and Brazil is a very, like, how can I say, rich country in water resources, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's not something really expensive. It's, uh, I would say that it would be pretty much the same. Uh, I would risk actually to say that it could be less than 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 forty dollars, but let's consider forty just in case. Okay. Right, for a single person, you're you're going to use, you know, uh, take a shower or cooking is not a lot of water consumption mm -hmm. for a single person. So you want to say about forty a month? I would say so at okay. the most. At the most, okay. That, but, How about uh, gas? Well, that's uh, gas. What? Uh, as I said, we don't we don't heat the house here, right? So um, there's no heating system. Sometimes people complain because the, also the walls aren't uh, insulated properly. Let's say, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not that bad because the temperature doesn't go down that much, and 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 it's not a long time in the year like in Canada that we need heating for you know seven months a year. Um, but so there, there's no gas consumption. What we use here is uh, propane. For cooking, most of the mm -hmm. of the uh, stoves and ovens are are uh, propane. Okay. Used um, one one uh, propane uh, tank. It's uh, it's it's fifty it's fifty dollars, and for a single person, I think it can last <laughs> almost forever because mm -hmm. it lasts a lot. For a family like mine, three people that we cook at home, we eat at home, we have lunch at. At home, it lasts like two months, sometimes okay. three months. So, okay. So for a single person, probably close to a year, I would think, maybe. I would say so. It's, yeah. It's, um, I mean, yeah, depending on if you cook that much at home, right? If you cook, you know, yeah, meals at home, sure. or not just sure. a, a bread with a cheese. <laughs> yeah. So what do you do for Wi-Fi and cell? How much is it out there for Wi-Fi and cell? So my Wi-Fi here in the countryside is a radio one, but even even in the city, I think it's pretty much the same price. We pay uh, 120 in our currency divided by five, roughly. It's going to be 25, 25 US dollars. 25 for, for Wi-Fi? For Wi-Fi, yes. Okay. Does and that I include one, cell? The cell... I pay fifty. I pay fifty dollars a month for four numbers. For everybody, okay. For everybody, for, for four different numbers, four cell phones. You know, okay. and it's a free. It's a free call for uh, nationwide, and SMS and messages and this type of thing. And also, they 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 pay for within this price. They pay my Netflix. <laughs> Just oh, nice curiosity. So nice. it's it's included Netflix service. So it's not <laughs> bad. That's a good deal. It is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's, yeah, let's talk about what, what you do for um, entertainment and restaurants and what the monthly expenses on that. So if, if you wanted to go out and have a nice, authentic um, Brazilian um, lunch or dinner, what are you going to pay for that? And how much do you think you budget per month for those kinds of expenses? Well, in terms of food, it's I think it's one of the Brazilians' strength, right? Because our food is I'm suspicious to say because <laughs> we love food and the region here is wow. We as I said before, we can find nice Italian restaurants, uh, German restaurants, and Brazilian traditional restaurants like uh, the, the main ones like the barbecue, you know, all you can eat. <laughs> Restaurants, they're, they're everywhere. So uh, I, usually, I usually divide them or classify them in a daily basis restaurants and a more uh, special restaurant. So a daily basis one is the one that uh, the blue collar white uh, working class can eat on a daily basis. Although your, your salary is not that much. I mean, you're a you know, uh, working class. But for you to have an idea, uh, in a all you can eat rest daily basis restaurant, you you will spend uh, four between four and five dollars for a, a meal, and and it's a very nice meal because it's all you can eat, and there's lots of you know different uh, like beans and, and and different pasta and 
and rice and salads and you know so for for a daily basis it would be like that around five dollars okay uh, all you can eat again it's all you can eat right so you can repeat how many times you want yeah and for for a more like special a restaurant or for a for a dinner you know something like that uh you will spend well it, it can go up to you know if sure. it's a very luxurious restaurant it goes really high but a nice a nice place where you you can have a dinner with your family and eat very well uh you will spend about 50 bucks and that's 50, with 60. all of you right that's all of you oh yeah i'm considering yes exactly i'm considering like my family right Mm -hmm. uh, so last Saturday we went to a restaurant uh, not far from here, and we ate very well. I t I took a few beers, and like pints, and I paid forty dollars. <laughs> it's like yeah, uh, that's great, yeah. man. That's great. How yeah, much do you think you budget per month, or what could people get by on a month, going out to eat and for a typical person there in a daily basis restaurant? If you consider a very nice all you can eat a restaurant like for working class. Five dollars. You will have lunch every day during the week, and you're gonna pay twenty five twenty five dollars, right, for eating very well. Great. Okay. So, how about groceries? Groceries have increasingly got expensive around the world. Um, what do you pay yes. per month? What would a person pay per month for for groceries over there in Brazil? Man, it's it's also very cheap when you when you convert to to dollar. It's sometimes I used to tell my friend that sometimes it's unbelievable, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I'm going to let you know this for a kilo of uh, beef, for example, one kilogram of a nice beef in a supermarket. It's, uh, it's there's a good one, a good piece of, uh, of, of beef, right? It, it, it's between six and $12 a kilogram. Okay. It can go. It can go up a little bit if you want to buy a filet mignon or, uh, you know, a special uh, what we call a picanha. It's uh, the the main cut for for barbecue. It's uh, in English, I think, it's top sirloin cap. Mm -hmm. We used to buy that in Canada. It's a very special meat. Mm -hmm. uh, we pay about this fourteen, sixteen at the most. Mm -hmm. uh, for pork, it's usually a bit less, and chicken as well. A bit less than that. I would say in general five to six dollars a kilogram of, of meat in general. Okay. Uh, for eggs, for example, you can have a dozen of eggs for maybe three three dollars, mm -hmm. four dollars, dozen of okay. eggs. A uh, can of beer, a can of beer in the red in the uh, in a supermarket is about uh, sixty to seventy cents. Okay. For a single person, it wouldn't be more than than three hundred. I would say three hundred. Okay. If you if you really you know cook at home and you like doing things at home and include your beer and or or a cagrina on the weekends or something like that because it's it's a lot of money. It's two thousand two thousand a bit more than two thousand in our currency reais. Mm -hmm. You can buy a lot of stuff with this. Okay. All right. Great. All right. And everybody always wants to know when they move to another country, what the healthcare is like and is it affordable? Oh man, it's affordable here. Uh, for you to have an example, we have a, a private healthcare uh, and we pay the three of us and I'm 47, my wife is 45. So depending on your age, it goes up, right? Sure. But for the three of us, um, we pay uh, 300, okay. 400, between three and 400 uh, USD a month. And every time we go to a hospital or any, or, or a doctor, we, we pay half. For example, if we, if we need to go to a hospital for a surgery, for example, my wife went there for, for her to, she had to remove her womb. I don't know in English, it's, uh, it's like, uh, I don't know the name, the name of this surgery. But uh, she didn't pay anything. And, and if we had to pay for that, it would be $2,000, about $2,000, something mm -hmm. like that. And we didn't pay anything because it was included in our, in our health. In your package. Care. Okay. Yeah. And that's it. Do, do, do they have a public health care system like Canada? 
We do, we do have, we do uh-huh. have. It works sometimes, right? For emergency things like uh, an accident. Normally, when the ambulance come to pick you up, they bring you to a to a public hospital, mm-hmm. and and usually you are well treated. But it's a system that we can't trust that much. Mm-hmm. So if if you can afford to pay, for example, for a single person, maybe a retiree above 60, 65, my mom, my mom pay. Pays, I think she is 68, my mom, and she pays, I think she pays $200. $200 a month, okay. So very good for a very good one, the best one, right? That includes hospitalization, includes uh, seeing the doctor and all the exams. And here in Brazil, there's some very particular thing uh, when we talk about uh, seeing the doctor, because every time we see the doctor for the first time, and he medicates you or prescribes uh, an exam, you you can go back the second time for him to read the, the exams and, and, and treat you, and you don't need to pay again. So mm-hmm. when you pay, you pay for two visits, the first mm-hmm. one and the second one for him to, you know, yeah. read the exams and give you. Okay. And then, and then we don't even have to pay. So so my agreement with my healthcare, healthcare is... We pay half. We pay fifty. But every time we go to see a doctor, a specialist, and, and I'm talking, I'm talking about specialists, right? It's not like in Canada that you see the family doctor, and he he just don't let you see the cardiologist because it's a lot of money for the, the you know for the government to pay for specialists. Mm-hmm. So they make everything they need for you to not go to the specialist. Right. Only if you're dying, they can send you there. But yeah. here, you you can book straight with the specialist, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So you can book the cardiologist. So for me, for example, I have a heart condition from my family, right? I don't have anything yet, but I have a family history of heart conditions. So I I can go every single year to a cardiologist for a checkup, and I just pay half. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm I can do all the exam, electrocardiogram, echocardiogram, and all this stuff, uh, ultrasound, and everything on my heart. And have the entire checkup done, and I would pay half, which would be probably eighty eighty dollars. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. I haven't done this for a while, but it's not expensive at all. Yeah. Okay. So we covered everything, Ezra. My last question is for for new settlers, your your company, for people that are interested in moving to Brazil. Is there a geographic region that you focus on, or do you cover the whole country of Brazil? Well, we focus on the south region. Okay, it's it's our main focus because we live here, right? So I can I can pick you up at the airport. I can drive you around and look for properties and look for schools for your kids or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, we can have people coming to other places, but it's a continental country, so uh, it's going to be more expensive to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and regardless of where you want to be, we can help you with the paperwork. And then, mm-hmm. and then you can, uh, we can sort of help you with the property. You know, it's important, especially if you want to buy something here, mm-hmm. uh, to locate uh, the right uh, agents and the, the most reliable uh, companies for for renting or this or that. So I can help mm-hmm. you uh, nationwide on doing mm-hmm. this. But being physically with you in other regions is going to be more expensive, although it's not impossible. Mm-hmm. Right. If if my schedule uh, can accommodate, I can travel and meet you. But uh, again, it's going to be a bit more costly for you. It sounds great. It, well, that's everything, Ezra. Is there anything else that you can think of um, that the viewers could benefit from before we close here? Anything else come to mind that we haven't discussed? Well, not really. <laughs> Maybe when we turn off, it will come to my mind, but not now. <laughs> well, listen. It's always Ezra- like that. Yeah, well, Esdras Suto Jr., thank you so much, man, for taking the time to share all this info about um, living and retiring in Brazil. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me here, Ray.